Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in which you are going to talk about the communicative language teaching method. The origin of the communicative approach dates back to the growing dissatisfaction with the structural and behaviorist approach to language learning. Several prominent British and American scholars, including Widowson, Chomsky, Wilkins, Halliday, and Himes have leveled harsh criticism on the, on the current conventional methods, criticizing their mechanical techniques built on repetitions, drills, and imitations. They claim that these methods and techniques kill the creativity and overlook the uniqueness of the individual learners. Another factor that led to the emergence of the communicative language teaching is the change in reality of Europe, especially after the creation of the European Union. Huge numbers of people are now moving freely across the European countries, feeling the need to communicate in different languages, more specifically in real-life situations that call for more face-to-face -face interaction skills based on fluency and mutual understanding. The communicative language teaching is also known as the notional functional approach. It was developed by the European Council based on the work of Wilkins, Widowson, Bromfit and others in the 70s of the 20th century. It's based on the assumption that language teaching should move beyond mere teaching of grammar and vocabulary to the study of meaning and functions of utterances in different authentic contexts. Communicative language teaching is derived from a combination of language theories from sociolinguistics, functional linguistics, and semantics and pragmatics. According to Howard, we can identify two versions of communicative language teaching, a strong version and a weak version. <clears throat> the strong version claims that language is learned by using it, thus contending that intensive exposure and willingness to use the language are two factors that enhance language learning. To a great extent, this view is similar to the one advocated by the direct method and the natural approach. This version of communicative language teaching avoids teaching all sorts of grammar and vocabulary structures as it emphasizes the role of acquisition of, a re of a learning. The strong version of communicative language teaching is transformed into task-based language teaching, a method that we shall discuss in the next video. The weak version is the most widely used version of communicative language teaching. Teachers prefer the weak version for the simple reason that it does not differ quite largely from previous methods. It still considers that learners learn language first, then use it. This entails that there is much room for pre-teaching vocabulary and grammatical structures prior to using them in communicative activities. In the forthcoming slides, we are going to address basically the characteristics of the weak version of communicative language teaching. The theory of language adopted by this method is somehow eclectic. It derives from various theories that have emerged as a result of the rise of the functional linguistics, including Chomsky's linguistic competence, Heim's communicative competence, Halliday's functions of language, and Widowson's theory of communicative acts. In general, one can say that communicative language teaching adopts a view of functional linguistics in which language is seen as a set of structures having different functions and performing different acts in different contexts. Take, for example, the structure of the modal verb can followed by a verb. This particular structure has various functions and performs different acts in different contexts. It can serve for request, permission, possibility, ability, and so on.
As for the theory of learning, pioneers of the communicative language teaching did not mention any particular theory of learning. However, a succinct observation of the roles attributed to learners and types of activities and procedures adopted in communicative language teaching reveal that it uses an eclectic theory of learning that puts communication, tasks, and meaningfulness at the heart of the teaching learning process. Also, elements of cognitive psychology are discernible in its focus on processes of learning and meaning production mechanisms. Instances of social interactionism are also found in its instances in its insistence on using language meaningfully to promote various skills of social interaction. Additionally, one can infer from its use of group work, peer feedback, and the interdependency of learners that it also adopts a social constructivist approach in which scaffolding and more capable peers play a central role. Finally, communicative language teaching is, is humanistic as it caters for the learner's emotional well-being through reducing the levels of anxiety and stress. Communicative language teaching aims to promote three main objectives. The primary objective of communicative language teaching is not to, to develop native-like proficiency, but to enable learners to communicate in comprehensible language. In this manner, communicative language teaching has destroyed the myth of the native speaker that was idealized by previous methods. The second objective of this method is to help learners develop their communicative competence, which includes four main elements. The first element is the grammatical competence, which is the ability to produce grammatically correct utterances. This element is similar to the one which was previously developed by, by precedent um, methods. The second one is the sociolinguistic competence, which refers to the uh, ability to produce utterances that are appropriate to the context in terms of formal and informal language, for instance. The third element is the discourse competence, which stands for the ability to produce coherent and cohesive utterances that are logically and chronologically comprehensible to the audience. The last element is the strategic competence, referring to the ability to use verbal and non-verbal languages to avoid any potential communication breakdowns. The third objective of this method is to integrate the four skills. Unlike the previous methods, which usually prioritize speaking and listening skills at the, beginning of, at the beginning levels and postpone the teaching of reading and writing skills till more advanced levels, communicative language teaching offers an approach that integrates these four skills together from the start. Communicative language teaching makes use of a set of activities that involve negotiation of meaning, interaction, and information sharing. Examples of these activities include, though not limited to, discussions, role plays, dialogues, interviews, scramble stories, task completion, gap filling exercises, problem solving exercises, pair work, group work, games, drawings, and picture stories. Teachers within communicative language teaching have a less authoritative role. Their main role is to facilitate learning by diagnosing the needs of the learners and providing them with guidance and advice. Teachers are also seen as group managers, motivators, and in the more traditional role of feedback providers. Although learners have little impact on deciding what to be learned, 
the communicative language teaching is still considered a learner-centered method. Learners are active participants who can use language creatively by venturing into creating their own utterances. They are also uh, required to, in to negotiate meaning during tasks and activities while they are working collaboratively with peers with whom they exchange feedback on each other's performances. The communicative language teaching makes use of three different instructional materials. First, there are task-based materials. These include a slightly different type of textbooks. Although these textbooks are still graded and sequenced according to the simplicity, difficulty and familiarity of grammar structures in ways that resemble structural syllabi, they introduce texts and dialogues that revolve around particular language functions such as apologizing, complaining, making requests and giving advice. Such text-based materials have taken emphasis from grammar and vocabulary to language functions and communicative acts. The second type of materials are task-based materials. These include handbooks and exercise books presenting cue cards, activity cards, scenarios, game cards, and puzzles, giving instructions to work in pairs and act out a dialogue, a simulation, a game, a role play, or simply solve a problem. The third type of instructional materials used in this, in this method are realia. Realia stands for the real-life objects brought to the classroom to add more authenticity to teaching process. Such objects include magazines, newspapers, maps, graphs, flyers, posters, all of which items are said to enhance communicative functions. The step-by-step -step procedures of an ideal communicative language teaching lesson are as follows. First, Teachers present a dialogue or a set of mini-dialogues presenting a central communicative function. For the sake of illustration, I am going to use a dialogue about making requests. After reading and listening to the dialogue, students are asked to perform some oral practice of the dialogue by repeating it in pairs. After that, the teacher asks comprehension questions about the topic, events, and people of the dialogue, and students are given time to answer. The teacher then asks questions that relate the topic of the dialogue to the student's personal life. They would ask a question like this one, have you ever asked someone for help? Various students respond by telling their own experiences where they requested help from others. The focus of the lesson then shifts to studying the basic communicative structure of the dialogue, which includes, in our case, the use of models to make requests. This, the purpose of this activity is to help students discover the rules of the communicative structure and study its grammar. The teacher then moves to oral production activities where students are encouraged to use the communicative structures in their own dialogues and role plays, talking about situations in which they use requests. Students eventually act out these, situa these situations in pairs, then they copy these dialogues. And the teacher assigns some homework, if any. Finally, the teacher does some oral evaluation of learning to check the extent to which learners have mastered the communicative function by asking them questions such as, such as these ones. How would you ask me to open the window? How would you ask your friend to give, her, to give you her notebook? Students may respond and then the lesson is over.
In case you're interested in reading more about the communicative language teaching, here are some suggested reading materials. Finally, here are some questions that might help you um, reflect on the communicative language teaching.